I think we'll keep moving in the interest of time. So next, uh, I will turn it over to Kevin Lomangino. We heard from Kevin earlier this week. He is Director of Market Research and Development for KGL, and will describe a variety of KGL's new and established consulting services, ranging from strategic planning to data analytics. Thank you, Mike. Uh, can everybody hear me? Okay. I'll put my slides up. Is that uh, showing you the slide view? Yes. Okay. Great. So, um, uh, so yeah, again, thanks, Mike, uh, for the opportunity to uh, tell everybody a little bit about uh, KGL Consulting. Um, so I head up the market research and development team, which is a unit embedded uh, within the consulting team that uh, collects and analyzes data um, from the market to help our clients who are mostly journal publishers um, make better decisions for their publishing programs. And uh, we'll talk about that and other consulting services. Um, but first, Let's uh, talk a little bit about KGL Consulting, give you some background about um, this unit. So similar to the editorial group, we were founded um, in 2000, actually co-founded by um, uh, one of our participants today, Cara Rivera, who uh, heads up the consulting unit um, and had about 20 years, two decades of uh, more or less continuous growth before we were acquired by KGL um, last year. And uh, so that's that's been a, a great transition for us. I think um, we provide a lot of services that uh, and skills that, that complement what KGL already does for its clients. And for the consultants, it's been great to be a part of uh, a global organization with the resources that KGL has um, so, so it's really been, you know, the proverbial win-win, um, but, but I mean that, it, it's been real. So uh, we've got eight consultants on the team. Uh, we're all very experienced, been working in publishing for a long time. We mostly work with societies. Uh, these could be either self-published societies or societies that are working with a, a university press or a commercial publishing partner. Uh, we do the odd book project or, or other type of project now and again, but mostly um, we're focused on journals and, and we have a, a very varied client list of large and small organizations. I've listed some of the bigger ones here, New England Journal of Medicine, you know, AAAS, uh, but uh, we also work in social sciences, the American Anthropological Association, for example. Um, so uh, quite a varied uh, group that we work with. That keeps it interesting. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what we can do. Um, so to start, I think probably the most important service that we can provide to journal publishers is strategic planning. Uh, in this day and age when there's so much disruption taking place, uh, so much change happening, it's just more important than ever to have a plan, to have a roadmap, to know what you're looking to do and how to get there. And we have a lot of experience helping our journal clients um, develop those types of plans um, to, to really chart a course for the future. And, and that, that can provide a lot of conf confidence for a group that um, you're gonna be able to survive and thrive despite the changes that are, that are happening. Um, new product development, certainly um, over the past five, even 10 years, we've helped develop many new journals, a lot of new open access journals, uh, and all of the, um, you know, everything that goes along with that from developing a, a, an editorial um, aims and scope statement, how to position yourself in the market, all those sorts of uh, research projects and, and management projects. Um, we, we have a lot of experience with that. On the editorial development side, certainly as we transition to an OA and more APC-based economy, uh, it's more important than ever to, to drive uh, a higher volume of, of high impact global submissions. And we have a lot of experience um, helping clients do that and, and 
can walk you through some of the strategies that we know are effective for that. Um, on the market research side, which is uh, my particular specialty area, um, uh, you know, author satisfaction, uh, again, hitting that theme of submissions and high quality submissions, uh, you have to keep your author satisfied. And really the first step in doing that is to understand how your authors perceive your journal currently and, and what the process is like for them uh, and to make sure that you're not in an echo chamber of your own society and your own editorial team, um, you know, with a sort of conventional wisdom about what uh, authors think of your journal. Because uh, often when we go out to a, a larger sample and, and a, a broader group of constituents and, and ask what they think, you, you can sort of puncture that bubble and, and realize that maybe you weren't uh, exactly where you thought you were. Um, so, so it's really important. Um, RFPs and contracts certainly help many societies. Uh, it's actually about a third of our business in consulting uh, is working with societies to negotiate um, new publishing agreements uh, with commercial publishers. Um, and then analytics are certainly becoming uh, an increasingly important element and, and skill set for again, driving those quality submissions. Citation analysis is, is very important to understand um, where you can find uh, the best quality submissions and, and give you support in doing that um, is, is something that we excel at. So I'll just walk you through a few areas where we find that we can typically help clients. And, and one of these is with submissions, especially high impact and high quality submissions. We work with a number of groups uh, enough that we have sort of almost a systematic approach to how we do this, um, which starts with sort of defining the editorial position of the journal, seeing where it exists in, in its own ecosystem in the landscape of journals um, and, and within the portfolio of publications that the society publishes if they do uh, more than one journal. Um, so then we, we benchmark editorial process and, and policies, especially turnaround times, because uh, that's, uh, as we know, one of the most important factors for authors in deciding uh, where they're going to submit uh, their, their content. They want it to be turned around fast. So uh, we can benchmark that via surveys. We can get a sense of how the, the community perceives the journal, which is very important to strategizing for how to increase submissions. Uh, and then analysis of citation data can tell you a lot about uh, where there are gaps in, in your editorial scope, uh, where there might be opportunities to identify and uh, solicit more high quality manuscripts. Uh, so, so there's a lot we can do here to um, increase submissions and I'll drill down into a few of these uh, areas where we can help. So one is uh, analyzing citations. Uh, this is something that can answer many important questions that editorial teams are, are asking. For instance, where can I find potential new editorial board members and reviewers to grow the global influence of the journal? Should we adjust the journal scope and editorial strategy to capitalize on growth or decline? of a particular subfield. Um, there, there's many different questions that we can look at and we can slice the data in lots of different ways to give you different views. So um, looking at the most cited articles is, is a, a good place to start. If you see that a particular type of article is generating a lot of citations, you wanna solicit more of those and, and try to get more of those uh, citations. Um, particular topics, are maybe better cited than others. Um, so you might wanna look at that. Particular authors and institutions, again, uh, who are the leaders in the field? Who, who are the leading institutions? And are they represented on your editorial board? Uh, and if they're not, uh, do you need to go out and try to um, find some of those people to, um, who represent the, the emerging, perhaps uh, fast growing areas in your field? Um, so uh, one of these uh, ways to slice and dice is by geographic origin, and I'll uh, walk you through what that might look like. 
Uh, so this is a, a visualization of um, citation data by country. Um, this was for a journal, I believe, in engineering or, or material science, um, where we went and looked at that journal and its competitors and tried to get a sense of where the most volume of content was coming from and where the most highly cited uh, content was coming from. So the, the, the vertical bars are volume of articles and, and the, the line that goes across is average citations per article. So when you look at this uh, graph, it, it certain things jump out at you, which may have not have been apparent uh, before. So obviously China um, is a huge player in this space. And, and you know, I think it would be pretty clear to anybody working in this field that there's a lot of uh, good Chinese research coming out, but maybe it wasn't understood the extent to which uh, that, that's taking place. And maybe your editorial board really does not reflect um, or is not commensurate with the amount of quality Chinese research that's coming out. And, and then maybe you'd look over to the right and see Germany uh, you know, in third place. Do, do we have any uh, researchers from Germany on our editorial board? If not, um, we might be missing out on an opportunity to connect with that community and be able to solicit and, and attract more high quality work. So, so that's just one example of how this type of thing works. Another area where we frequently work with our clients is with author satisfaction benchmarking studies. Just some examples of the clients we've worked with, NJM, uh, PNAS. Um, we can go out to the community, find out how satisfied they are with factors related to submission, publication, um, post-publication, um, how your uh, journal is perceived vis-a-vis -vis the top competing journals and be able to identify trends and then go in and fix those that, so that you have an opportunity to be more attractive to your community. I mean, one of the things that we, we find is that uh, when an author has a bad experience with your journal, you know, whatever that might be, uh, whether it sat too long in peer review or, or you know, was just a, a difficult proofing process or, or whatever, when they have a bad experience, uh, you're in, in a lot of cases, you're dead to them for maybe five years or more. Uh, they're just not gonna be willing to give you another opportunity. Um, so it's really important to find out where those pain points might be and, and try to go in and fix them. And here's a visualization of what you might learn from uh, an author satisfaction study. So in this case, you might go out to the author community, ask them which journals they've published in recently, and how satisfied were they with the overall experience uh, publishing in that journal? And clearly, if you're journal A here, um, you're feeling good about your process. Uh, authors are very much pleased. And if you're journal D, uh, you realize you've got some work to do and you can drill down from this point to see again where those pain points are and, and try to uh, work with your editorial team and, and all players really to, to get that ironed out and um, make sure that you're as appealing as possible to potential authors. Uh, so I'll wrap up with just a couple of new services that we've recently introduced that might be of interest. Uh, these are based on what we perceive to be uh, gaps and, and opportunities that, that we've observed with our clients and what our clients are, are telling us. Uh, one of them is a, a contract publications director service. Uh, we have a lot of clients who um, maybe don't have a need for a full-time publications director and yet could really benefit from the management expertise that someone like that could bring to their program. So our thinking is Maybe what you need instead of a full-time person is a, a third of a time person or, or a half-time person um, that we supply um, at much lower cost to the society. And, you know, we, we sort of handle all the staff and HR aspects of it, uh, but the society benefits from having their strategic insight, their experience to handle 
the day-to-day -day stuff and, and the strategic stuff to be able to position uh, the, the journal program uh, to succeed. So, so that's one thing we've been rolling out recently, which uh, may be of interest to this group. And one other new service that we rolled out is what we call PALS, the Publisher Appraisal and Liaison Service. And so this is uh, something that we've observed where, especially with our clients who we work with on RFPs, um, what, when it's time to renew their contract, they are thinking in a strategic mode of, you know, where are we going in the future? What publishing partner can best support us for that future? Um, but then once th those discussions happen, it, all those sort of issues go away um, and, and there's not enough strategic thinking going on throughout the term in order to really uh, optimize the, the program. Um, and what this envisions is going back to those groups and, and not, I mean, not just the groups that we work with on RFPs, but anybody could benefit from this annually, you know, biannually, what have you, to get an expert and independent appraisal of all the factors that go into publishing a journal, whether it's editorial, production, financial, et cetera, and, and really sort of give you a tune up and, and help look at the areas where you can optimize and do a little bit better so that um, the journal continues on an upward trajectory. And that will wrap up my time here. I hope I didn't go too far over, um, but thanks everybody. And, and I'm, I'm happy to take questions um, or, or to move on to the next segment. Any questions for Kevin? I have one. I, I I didn't share that question before with you, Kevin, but I, I was interested by the uh, uh, author satisfaction uh, slide that you had. Um, and honestly, I don't have a good perspective to know what the you know right satisfaction levels are. Obviously, we all want to see 100%, but what's realistic? And so my question is like, have we have we established a benchmark that can help our actually customers understand what's what's you know better than average at least? Yeah, we do. We can look back at surveys that we've conducted. You know, I mean, you can never, it's, it's difficult to always have an exact comparator for the, the field that you're working in, or, you know, there are variables that, that will impact that. But we can get a general idea of, well, what do we see with journals that look like this um, when we've done surveys in the past? And, and where does this journal? fall along that continuum. And, and based on that, we can give you a good sense of, yeah, you're, you're sort of where the market um, wants, where you want to be in, in order to look good for the market, or you need some work to do. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Kevin.